talking uh, about the war, um, did you ever experience a bombing raid any uh, while oh. you were in Hyde? Or? Oh, uh, oh, I had them up the road here, um, and uh, I could show you two. I could show you two places where they were flattened, completely flattened places. But then in the power boat, there'd be a raid overnight, perhaps. Would there really? Oh yeah. It's a regular occurrence. Well, it happened occasionally, put it okay, that way, yes. and we were often called out to get in the air raid shelters across right, the yeah. road. Yeah. Um, once we stayed behind us kids, and we got ripped off a bit by the security bloke. Yeah. Um, another time was I, I was in Jimmy Rand's office, where I was the office mm -hmm. boy, and I was leaning like this on the window sill, and below my nose, just there, was an incendiary bomb. Really? Yeah. But they weren't they weren't explosive in the early years. No, and you could pick them up and throw them in a bucket, couldn't you? That's yeah, the story. But they had a, a detonator in there. Mm -hmm. If they hit the right way, the, yeah. the detonator would ignite mm -hmm. all the magnesium. Yeah. The shell of the incendiary bomb was yeah. magnesium and it was full of powder. And it would have had a devastating effect on the boatyard, obviously, because yeah. uh, most of the boats were made of wood, weren't oh, they? Oh, definitely. So yeah. uh, they were quite a threat. And Yes, we heard that they put some out because mm. they always had people um, on guard. On guard. Yeah. Um, I understand that you've got a photograph yes. of the apprentices. Do you want to show the camera? Um, yeah, this what is, the, uh, hold it up and show the camera. This is all the apprentices, including what they call premium apprentices, which had to pay. These were, would be the uh, college boys, I would imagine. But I'm on the end, right where my thumb is down here sat up so you're the one on the end there are you nearly on um, the end and one of the things that um i also found mm -hmm. uh, lying around is this um do you know who this young man is yeah i do recognize do you want to just show it to the camera please <laughs> that came off of my uh identity card to, to prove that i worked there and you had to show it at the gate and has it got anything written on it and printed on it yes it, it's got my Old address in Dibden Perlu, yeah. and it's got it's got British Powerboat Company printed on it. You can mm -hmm. just read it. Yeah. Yes. And everybody had their own identification yes. card during the war, did That's, they? Yes, they did. We were talking about the um, bombing raids. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, uh, Hyde didn't escape completely oh, from no the bombing way. raids. No way. Um, Dibden Perlu caught it, and um, here and there, because in fact, an air raid shelter they hadn't finished building got hit by a bomb. Yeah, well that was lucky no one was in it, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, um, but you see there were some big guns down at Hardley, a big gun site, aircraft gun site, and um, they would let rip at times when the jury was up there, and I suppose they'd have a go at the, at the guns as well. But even apart from that, um, all around there are, there are odd bombs, yeah, the yeah. whole area. And along this road here, when it was a dirt road, it was filled from end to end with, um, uh, what you call it, um, gas, um, smoke screen lorries. Right. Do you know what they were? No. Well, if the wind was in the correct direction, which it usually was our prevailing one is westerly, and there was a raid on the dock, they go out and they let the smoke screen mm -hmm. develop across the water and cover the ships. Right, oh, right. Yeah. I've never heard that story and before. Well, they were parked bumper to bumper along here because there were at that time there were trees both sides of the road yeah. and it was a complete cover yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. And I wished I'd have kept some of the uh, logs when they cut them up because they had they put their battalion in their name, cut it into mm -hmm. in their spare time, oh, yeah. cut their names and the date yeah. and everything. Yeah. So we, we we're talking about um, as well about the end of the uh, um, British power boat yard, and we were saying that uh, when the contracts came to an end, when the war finished, the contracts were pretty well stopped on um, uh, straight away, yeah. and that spelt the end of the uh, boat yard. And, uh, yeah. and um, uh, you moved on. Yes. And uh, basically, the uh, boat yard. Boat yard um, they, they turned their hand to different things, you were saying? Well, it, before, about the, before the, the I left, prefabbed... Before I left, 
they went into making prefabs. How many got turned out, I couldn't tell you, but I, I was involved in putting certain amount of wiring in the sections, and there was one actual prefab, a really big one, which put up by the uh, Hyde Hospital for use of the nurses. Uh, it just after when the war finished, this was, but then Scott Payne asked for it to come out, and he must have sold it, and it went into no way around the corner. And that place, as far as I'm aware, is still there because it was made with marine ply. Marine ply is practically perish, indes yeah. indestructible, of course, yeah, yeah. and it's and, also treated, and it's still there, yeah, it's still, still there, there today, I know, yeah. So, um, um, the, uh, it was rather unfortunate about um, Hubert Scott Payne, of course, because um, shortly after the war, he um, uh, emigrated to, uh, or during the war, he emigrated to America, didn't he? Went to back. Live? I think he came from there, didn't he? Originally? No, no, he was, he? Uh, he was born in, down in Shoreham, in, I he? believe, yes. Um, have you got any idea why he, um, he's never been pre properly recognised? He was never ennobled during his lifetime. Uh, there was a, a proposal to make the Itchen Bridge named after him, but there's uh, and in fact one of the um, uh, facts about uh, the, um, uh, the boatyard when he sold it up was that he, he was going there was going a statue of him be, to be constructed that never was. Ooh. Have you any ideas why uh, that he doesn't seem to have had the recognition that perhaps he had at the time? No, uh, you got any not, ideas? I've never heard of it, any reason why not. But of course, you see, there are other powerboats made by um, other companies, quite a number of companies that, that of make them as well. Vospers, Vospers, Vospers very famous, famously, right. and that was the preferred design for the Admiralty, wasn't it? They yeah. wanted the Vospers rather than. I see. And, but um, his design, uh, Hubert Scott Payne's design, went to America and was the uh, forerunner of the PT boat, wasn't That's it? That's right. That, so right. you know, even in, in America, his uh, he was recognised. He was recognised. Yeah. He saw the president. He was introduced to the president. Was it? Yes, he was. Uh, in thirty nine, when he first went over on a so called secret mission, oh. um, they wanted to buy his uh, design for the PT boat. But it uh, what is fascinating to another thing that I find very interesting is the fact that he hasn't received this recognition, and yeah. really it reflects the boatyard itself. Which yeah. seems to have disappeared from history. Yeah. That. Um, nobody. Um, yeah, it's gone quiet, hasn't it? Yeah, nobody seems to have um, uh, uh, recognised it anymore. I think there was so much going on in those days. So many other things happening.